La Asamblea General. The General Assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency Nguyen Duang Phuc, State President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. I ask protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Nguyen Duang Phuc, State President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, and to invite him to address the General Assembly. Mr. President, and all the heads of state and government, I wish to extend my congratulations to Mr. Abdullah Shahid on the assumption of his duties as president of the 76th UNGA. I'm convinced that under his able leadership and his vast experience, he will lead our session to success. I highly appreciate the significant contributions of Mr. Volkan Bokir in his capacity as president of the 75th UNGA. I also wish to once again congratulate Mr. Antonio Guterres on his second term of office as a secretary general and I believe that with his perseverance and dedication, he will work to realize the organization directions and priorities in the years to come. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the UNGA this year convenes against a unique backdrop. As the COVID-19 pandemic is jeopardizing the people's lives worldwide. At this very moment, I'm convinced that our thoughts these days are with our countries and people, and my heart yearns for my homeland, Vietnam, where the anti-Vietnamese nation is vigorously combating this pandemic to protect the health and lives of the people, to sustain economic growth, and to ensure social security, leaving no one behind. No statistical figures can truly measure grief and loss caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This is about all the loss of lives and subsequently severe economic damages, as well as far reaching impacts on societies and the people's well being. The pandemic sounds a warning belt of shocking destruction resulted from non traditional security challenges, such as disease or climate change, if they are not addressed timely and decisively. The pandemic also exposed the shortcomings of the global governance and the increasing inequality among nations. Nonetheless, COVID-19 is not the sole challenge that we are facing today. Increasing tensions among major powers led to a divisive and unstable international system. Wars are taking the lives of many innocent people. Disputes over territories and resources in many areas are on the verge of erupting. The rise of power politics, the disregard for international law, and the unilateral acts of coercion and hindrance against the countries in exercising the legal rights and are still taking place in many regions. In the gloomy picture, what really motivates us are the strong desire for peace, cooperation, and development among the people around the globe. Uh, our re recognition of the importance of the international solidarity and multilateralism. United Nations, with its 75-year experience in preserving peace and nurturing friendly, just and equitable international relations, uh, the organization continues to assert its key role in multilateral system, effectively coordinate corrected efforts to respond to global challenges. Against such backdrop, I fully support the team proposed by Mr. President, and let me share with you some of my thoughts. First, the most urgent task today is to express decisively contain the COVID-19 worldwide. The world cannot be safe if any single person or country still suffers from this pandemic. Vietnam values the role of UN agencies and other multilateral institutions particularly the COVAX facility in promoting fair access to COVID-19 vaccines and medications. For the pandemic to be repelled, it is essential that we stand in solidarity 
uphold high responsibility and step up cooperation, particularly in terms of vaccine allocation, should be given to nations with low vaccination rate. Second, the key solution to contain the pandemic and foster economic recovery lies in our ability to strengthen our own resilience in face of crisis. But it does not mean that we have to do it alone. Resilience can only be sustained if it is based upon cooperation and connectivity among nations, particularly at a time when non-traditional security challenges do not know borders and can impact any nations. We highly value the role of the UN system and uh, do hope that it will continue to work closely with the UN member states, uh, endeavor to build resilience, accommodating interests and concerns of all countries. Third, the challenges we face can be turned into development opportunities as our daily production business activities have to undergo changes to adapt to the pandemic. This is an opportunity to, uh, for digital transformation, utilization of novel technologies, and enhanced productivity, competitiveness, self-reliance of our countries, economies. It is also a chance for us to pursue green transformation, sustainable development, trade and investment facilitation. It, it should also work to gather in promoting the flow of goods and people and maintaining global change. The agenda for sustainable development provides us with excellent blueprint to seize such opportunities and call for enhanced cooperation. We call upon all countries to fulfill their financing for development commitments, reschedule debt payments by developing countries, and thereby oppo turning opportunities into concrete development outcomes. Fourth, cooperation in mitigating and preventing desired impacts of climate change has become crucial than ever before. Harsh weather conditions, sea level rise, environmental pollution, and biodiversity degradation are cumulative consequences of decades of mankind's reckless quest for development. Those challenges are pushing us into acting promptly to safeguard our planet, to realize the internationally agreed thresholds of 1.5 degrees Celsius. We are, as we are heading toward the COP26 summit, we need to make every effort to cut greenhouse gas emissions in which developed countries should take the lead. More, moreover, developing countries should receive further assistance in financing, technology transfer, and capacity building so as to reduce emissions and enhance disaster pre prevention and mitigation in ways that foster transition toward green and circular economy. And this is a safe opportunity for us to ensure the harmony between man and the green nature. Fifth, the key to fostering recovery and growth in the post-pandemic area is to sustain peace, security, and stability in, the, in each country, each region, and the world at large. Vietnam calls for a global ceasefire and an end to all violence to ensure the safety of civilians and facilitate humanitarian assistance in areas of conflicts. Vietnam has undergone decades of wars to reclaim independence and national reunification. As escape isolation and embargoes, we have made every effort to mobilize internal strengths, uphold self-reliance, and adapt ourselves to the prevailing trends of our time to achieve our potential international standing and prestige today. We understand the meaning of nothing is more precious than independence and freedom, and of peace and development of all nations. Vietnam condemns all acts of war and politic power politics and violence of fundamental principle of the UN Charter and international law. More than ever before, all actors in international relations need to act in good faith, uphold responsibility while avoiding tensions and confrontation. 
we should together try to reshape international ties and build trust among countries on the basis of equality and cooperation. And we must also respect for independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, non-interference in internal affairs of states, and resolve dispute in a peaceful manner. As this August Assembly, we once again reaffirm our solidarity with the people of Cuba and reiterate a strong recall for a complete end to the unilateral embargo against Cuba. We hope that the situation in Afghanistan will soon stabilize for the Afghan people, particularly women and children, to be able to live in peace. We support the just struggle of the Palestinian people and the two-state solution towards the establishment of an independent Palestinian state alongside with the State of Israel. After, Mr. President, after 35 years of renewal, Vietnam has made historic accomplishments. We are becoming uh, a high-income developed country by 2045 on the century of, uh, anniversary of Vietnam's independence. The aspiration for a strong and prosperous Vietnam can only be realized when the country is truly a lost governed state of the people, for the people, and by the people. Vietnam is pursuing a people-centered approach and is striving to achieve social progress and equality, preserve cultural values, and protect the environment while promoting sustainable, inclusive development. This is closely aligned with the SDGs that we endeavor to fulfill. Vietnam has been pursuing the foreign policy line of independence, self-reliance, peace, friendship, cooperation, and development diversification and multilateralization of external relations. As a responsible member, Vietnam is proactively and actively engaging in extensive international integration, make, making responsible contribution to the con concerted efforts of the international community. Vietnam unwaveringly supports multilateralism with the UN at the center and international law as foundation. We uphold the purposes and principles of the UN Charter and endeavor to make contributions to a more democratic and effective UN. We will always remember and treasure the UN's invaluable assistance according to Vietnam. The fruits of Vietnam's reform and integration owe partly to the resources and policy advice of the UN development system in the region. Vietnam is working closely with fellow ASEAN members to promote ASEAN sanctuary in the maintenance of peace, security, prosperity in Southeast Asia and Asia Pacific at large. The ASEAN UN relations has constantly been consolidated and developed, becoming a role model for cooperation between the UN and other regional organizations. We are making vigorous efforts to implement the five-point consensus endorsed by ASEAN leaders to foster dialogue, reconciliation, humanitarian assistance to the people of Myanmar. Vietnam shares ASEAN's position and the international community's common voice on the importance of peace, stability, security, safety, freedom of navigation and overflying in the South China Sea. We hold that all parties should refrain from unilateral actions that may further complicate the situation, revolve, resolve disputes and differences through peaceful means in line with the UN Charter and international law, including UNCLOS 1982. It is necessary to fu fu fully observe the CDOC and soon achieve the, a substantial and effective COC in line with international law, including UNCLOS 1982. Mr. President, on this momentous occasion, on behalf of the state and people of Vietnam, I sincerely thank all countries for the trust placed in Vietnam in its capacity as non-permanent member of the UNSC for the term 2020-2021. In the past two years, Vietnam has always upheld the principle of partnership for sustainable peace. We have promoted dialogue and cooperation and actively join the concerted efforts to prevent and address conflicts. Vietnam has advocated the upholding of the UN Charter and international law 
bonds that doing cooperation with regional organizations, conflict prevention, my action, and the protection of the people and critical infrastructure in armed conflicts. The national flag of Vietnam is flying high at the UN peacekeeping missions in South Sudan and Central African Republic, and it will soon be flying in other missions as well. With our desire to make further contributions to the work at the UN, Vietnam is running for a seat at the Human Rights Council for the term 2023-2025 and at other important uh, UN agencies. We look forward to the continued support from all countries in this endeavor. Mr. President, the part ahead will not be easy, but I'm convinced that the world's people's hearts will beat as one. Vietnam will work closely with countries and people around the world so that together we can prevail over the pandemic and build a world peace, prosperity, happiness for all. And this will be a glorious victory for all of us. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the State President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.